old Booker T. All right, so who you got in number one, Matt? Yeah, quit avoiding the question, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden with a drop. Oh, you got a... Uh... Oh, wait, wrong one. <laughs> wrong one. You got a in keel. <laughs> yes. His hands are not freezing. Maybe sometimes. Maybe at times. But sometimes he catches a chill in the tips. Oh, I hate when I catch a chill in the tips. <laughs> it gets all small and weird. <laughs> I was in the pool. <laughs> Look, stands in there. Yeah. <laughs> but I just, I just feel like Harry has. I'm talking about floor here, and if I'm taking that much an investment of those guys, I want to try and, I want to hit that double. If I can get a one on one and hit that double or triple instead of hitting a 700 foot home run with possibly with Metcalf, um, I think I'm going to try and take the floor. I'm a, I'm a little I wouldn't I'm not a gambler at, at that price range unless I unless I see things. But I think the other two have more questions than than Harry does. Agree. I, so I, I'm down with that. I'm not down with him having that number one, but I I understand the. I think he's the safest out of these bigger guys and I haven't watched AJ Brown yet. Um, but from what I understand, he seems to be a pretty safe fellow. Um, but Harry looks to Always be wears a seatbelt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know. Harry seems to be pretty safe. And if you don't want to swing and miss, it's a decent shot at the one, one, I suppose. Um, I like to look at maybe it a little differently. Let's just, I, I'm probably not going to take that one, one pick. No, I mean, if I have a one-one pick this year and it's not super flex, I'm probably trading back. I mean, I, I think I, I think that seems to be everyone's mantra this year yeah. when it's comes to rookie picks. So it might be I, a little hard to. Yeah, I think it's gonna be hard to trade back, um, unless somebody's in love with a guy. Like if if DK starts slipping and a guy in your league really loves DK and you're sitting or DK wonder, lands somewhere off. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's landing spot for these guys too. I I think the wide receivers are a little more open than the running backs are. Because um, like like there's a mock going around. I think it's called the simulation mock. We were just talking about it off air, and I think Miles Sanders went at three hundred one because he got drafted by the Panthers. I mean, uh, Miles Sanders went to the Panthers and David Montgomery to the Vikings. It's just like yeah. that would absolutely crush their value. Seems so yucky. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, if any of these guys end up in some advantageous situations, maybe sure. like uh, in indie. Or uh, a Philly, Green or Bay. Green like if Bay. DK Metcalf went to the Packers I don't, for some reason, like just I saying. just don't see. Yeah, I don't see Green Bay taking wide receiver I don't either, that early but I'm just, because of right. Yeah, if you compare one of these guys with a with a with a young an elite, quarterback, or an yeah, elite good quarterback, or if the Chiefs are like maybe they think Tyreek Hill might be up against something here, and maybe yeah, or they or, spend or some even money trying to because I heard there was a rumor. I read a rumor or an article somewhere that said that the Chiefs are trying to add a playmaker, whether it be through free agency or the draft. So if they bring in more of a possession guy because that's not what that's not what Watkins or Hill is about. Obviously they have Kelsey to to manufacture that. But right. if they bring in another one of these guys, I mean that's obviously something to consider, but I think landing spot's gonna be big for these guys, but I don't think it's the end of the world just because of I feel like there's lo- just a little more talent at wide receiver than there is at running back. So do you have <laughs> Harry is your one one overall? I know you Without being it. able to like we see, like we all like, are feeling the same way, we would probably most likely trade out of the one one. You can't trade, so you can't trade So just out. saying, not being able to trade if you had to make the pick. Yes. that's probably your one one. Yeah, I, think, I just I, like I think that's a pretty not messing it up, and you know we say that a lot in startups. Yeah, in the I don't, don't want to picks. You don't. I don't want to fuck it up. up. You're right. So you right. Well, we'll have to mock it up before you fuck it up, and and you know. That's a that's a that's a good call, Jay Wayne. How do you feel about it? Well, I don't think even after after watching these three wide receivers, and maybe maybe one of them goes to a landing spot that I just can't turn away from. But I I don't think I can take a wide receiver one one or probably even one two. Like I think I got to go Jacobs and Montgomery before I take right. a wide receiver. But you basically know that you don't have to do that. <clears throat> I mean, but what? I do if I can't trade. Right. Well, if you can't trade, so you if you can't trade, you're 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 going that route. Yeah. I mean, unless they get, it's just a terrible landing spot. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I want the running back. All right. So, going with uh, res- the receivers that we talked about here, who who would be your first guy to take here? <sighs> Man, I really I, I struggle with it. I don't know what to say. But I mean, what are we doing here? You know, what are we, we're playing? 
We're playing a game. We're playing for keeps. We're playing a game based on a game. I, I, most of us play for a fair amount of money here, so it's not like we're just in cheap, cheap leagues telling you what we think. You know, we should do in in a, in a league that doesn't have any merit to it. There's, there's long term implications here. I mean, I think I think I got to swing for the fence, and uh, I think I got to take DK Metcalf. And I think that it's not only a home run cut of epic proportion. But I think there's some safeness built into this dude based on his size and his his athleticism minus the three cone drill, the forty yard dash. I mean, I think you look at guys like Corey Davis and Sammy Watkins, or names you brought up at, off air. Like those guys continue to con- to hold their value. Now Sammy's actually <coughs> well, done a right. decent and, amount and, on the field, but and Sammy up until this year had well, he kind of started to finally decline. Finally, but, not, but and he's he, not. And, a, he's, and he declined he's like a little five bit. Five or six years in the league, now. but for the most part, he was really holding his value. And but Corey, Corey Davis, Davis is still holding his value. Because, hasn't done a ton because they have those good games where you see right. what could be, right. and it has all those other people really holding on, especially if you were in to begin with. Right. So, so all agree. DK Metcalf has to do is bust off a couple of long touchdown runs. Or catches, and people are going to be like, "See, I told you." And and there's going to be people that hold his value high. So I think that if you take him, you you're not only getting an awesome swing and a chance of a guy being just, you know, the next Calvin Johnson. I mean, it's just, it seems like the ceiling you went there, huh? Seems like the ceiling. It's a pretty high ceiling. I know that's Very what's high. so intriguing the highest about of ceilings. This guy, which they, is why maybe I should take him at one one. I mean, they they. they they basically called him. They Megatron. They just they didn't even go human. They just went right. They went with a. I mean, alien life form. I mean, Actually, this guy De- robot. Decalin Zakar sounds robot. like one of the dang dragons of Daenerys Starborn. Like he could be a freaking dragon. <laughs> like <laughs> Matt is shaking his head at the moment. This dude is cash fan over here making references. <laughs> What, it doesn't sound like a, a, a dragon's name? I just high point. Just drink. <laughs> uh I just I I could I could possibly take him drink one one if, if the well <laughs> you guys I'll drink when I'm done talking. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, maybe you should take him a one one. I mean, it's the swing. It's the swing of all swings, and we like to play it safe in startups, and then I like to take some swings in a rookie draft. And I, we talked about this in Rookie Draft. I think right. it was on a Patreon uh, show where we no, talked think, about... Well, yeah, I think you're right. I think talking you're right. about, well, do you play it safe Risk or do you and take swings and, and, and in, a, in a rookie draft? And to me, it comes down to the tiers of players and when is there a tier break and when does it make sense to take a swing? And I feel like it makes sense to take a swing because I think in a couple of weeks we'll know what these NFL teams think about him, but I'm pretty sure... He's probably going pretty high. Like he's probably going to be the first wide receiver drafted, and someone's probably going to reach up and swipe him because you have to reach to get him. Just like in a in a fantasy draft, you got to reach to get him, or you're not going to get him. Uh, I I think he's going to have the draft capital, and I think he's going to have people behind him from an athletic standpoint that want him to him want him to succeed. And when they see a little bit of success, they're going to be able to ride that for a while. And I think you could still get out at a minimal loss if you decided you didn't like him down the road. So I think there's some safeness yeah. in it, in him as well as the home run cut. Give me DK Metcalf. I, I, like, I, I didn't feel that way before today, but we came in here. We talked about all this. Yeah, that's what I got to do. I like all that. I th- <clears throat> I'll drink. I'm I'm pretty <laughs> the most obnoxious <laughs> drink possible <laughs> i uh I, i'm feeling all that i like what you said and i, I think that all has a, a ton of merit and uh and i i think that was, taking one was a pretty good i'm, I'm gonna take a keen butler at one yeah that's fair i like i like the traits i like the fact that i like there, there's a whole bunch to be desired with with dk metcalf that were we're wanting mm-hmm. and we want it to be. And I, I just, I see a good amount of it already with Butler, all the Absolutely. things that we talked about in his breakdown. I think there's some good agility there. I think he can win everywhere on the field. He can do a lot of different things. He does absolutely a hundred percent. I need to clean up the drops like that. That's a huge problem. But if you're drafting him at this point and where he's going to be drafted, which is probably, you know, moderately high, like uh, you know, top five probably is where if, you got to take If Butler him. goes to Baltimore, does your opinion change? 
I mean, yeah, I don't really like anybody in any receiver in Baltimore yeah. currently. Whoever they draft. So land obviously landing spot is going to be huge for any of these guys, yep. running back, receiver, tight end, whatever. But I agree with you. I mean, I think his game translate probably the most. He probably doesn't need a scheme. Right. Butler, that is, you know, he right. can kind of go play wherever in whatever. Yeah, so I, thing. I, I, I really like him, and I like there's a, a pretty. I feel like there's you haven't seen the best Sakeem Butler, like uh, Mormon said, uh, Matt said here, and uh, and we've all kind of discussed. And I think the stuff you have seen has been really good, and I think there's still a level to go up with Butler. So I feel I feel decent putting him right now as my wide receiver one. Obviously, only having looked at these three guys, right. Um, but and yeah. I could go Butler right there too. I was debating on which one to take. But I feel I like your Metcalf discussion, and I feel kind of the same way that yeah. the, the value loss is going to be minimal for a while with him for at least a couple of years. Um, and then you get the third year breakout of NFL wide receivers. I think that's still a thing. Yeah. All right. So who who's your two, uh, Matt? I'm going Butler. You're going Butler. I'm going Butler. So did we sway you today? Yeah, a little, a little bit. bit. A little bit. A little bit. What, what, what was the biggest factor? I think the biggest thing that we gave him a reason for the breakout age. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest thing was that the his negatives that he has don't aren't as big as the negatives I see with DK. I think he shows that he can run the routes. He can be physical after the catch. Um, the, the hands inconsistency can be worked through. Um, like I said, I also said, like I said, I think his best game, his best tape is still yet to be seen. So um, I think there's a little higher floor on on Butler than there is on DK as well, too, just because of the injuries. Yeah. We okay. don't have the injury history. And I think that um, and his ability to play over the field too. DK only played outside. Butler can play all over the field and on the left. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he can. But so did you. Juju only played on the right in college at USC. Yeah. Yeah, but obviously that's scheme, and we are talked about we talked about the death about Ole Miss and their lack of creativity. We'll call it absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think I think Butler offers some some good upside there, and someone I'm definitely definitely going to go watch some more tape on. Yeah, we might have to get your boy Riley on here to tell us why we shouldn't be taking Akeem Butler. Out. I believe he has him as his wide receiver ten. I think he's a pretty big Jeez. hater. Yeah, wide receiver. That's 10. a master hater. <laughs> A buy master hater. <laughs> all, right. all right. Really got somewhere yeah. there. <laughs> Jay Wayne, who you got it to? I mean, I'll go, I'll go Butler at two. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm with you. I could take him at one. I think he's maybe a little safer, but with the whole value thing with DK Metcalf, I've, I I feel pretty equally as safe, I guess. I don't know. I, I agree. He did a lot. He did a lot more in, in the one year he got. The bulk of the the produ- the targets, and I mean, he definitely has almost as high of a ceiling. I mean, he's got a pretty high ceiling, and he's got a, I think, a decent floor. And I'm willing to overlook the uh, breakout age, and I, I I'll go Butler too. Yeah, well, I'm more excited about him than <coughs> I am Harry. I think. So I, I think have to put I think Harry there's a lot. At, I'm, I'm, there's a lot to be said for Harry being, I think, pretty pretty safe and pretty bulletproof. Um, so it's kind of hard for me not to take him right here, but I, I'm going to go, I'm going to agree with you with your kind of one pick on Metcalf and I'll, 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 I'll take the big cut right here Put and, and take two. a little bit more risk with some insulated, with some insulated value moving forward on maybe Metcalf holding some decent value of, of what could be and a couple of big plays yeah, holding some it's value not gonna take much. longer. I think Harry's just a really safe. So I'll put Harry at three out of these guys. Um, I think he's really safe, but it's not, it's not as fun. Uh, but like, you know, depending on how you want to play it, I could easily, you could easily have him at one. If you really don't want to take a big swing and a miss, I think, uh, I think Harry is, is a, is a fine pick. I don't think there's really too much of a wrong answer here. Right. I mean, half it's, all the, pre- it's all half preference. Of the, right. And half of these guys are going to miss anyway. And it's well, really, it's going to, it's going well, to, de- not all going to be first round picks. Right. And it's going to depend on landing spots and you know, who the hell knows. Right. In it two could weeks. Be, could be, th- I mean, we could have this conversation again in 
five years and see who was right. Yeah, right. And, and and the best wide receiver could be none. Could be neither of these guys. Right. It could be AJ Brown. Could be yeah. Paris Campbell. Could yeah. be could be Andy Debo, Isabella. Could I don't be know. Isabella could be Greg Dortch. Right. Yeah. You know who and the hell knows. For the record, like Casey and I haven't done research on AJ Brown yet. He'll be coming up maybe next week. Yeah. Um, these so are the I only three receivers that I've looked at. Right. I feel it's, it's been weird. Like I, it's it's kind of sucks. Like. Some of these camera angles, like show me the replay, right? Please another, show me the replay. The part that we probably should have talked about earlier with these receivers here is that it it, it it really is hard to watch receiver tape unless you can get the all twenty two and like I all, would pay some serious cash if right. someone give me some college all twenty two. Right, they're not even giving it to Matt Harmon anymore. So like I just I don't understand. Like a lot of these guys who are I'm very appreciative of all these guys who are making the cut ups, but like only a handful of the guys will like. After these guys are making the catch, there's a f- replay of almost every almost catch. every time. Unless the offense is going so fast, they right. can't show you the replay. Caddy the Lama ball. does the best job, in my opinion, of always. After somebody makes a catch, you can almost always count on a replay coming with his stuff. Right. Um, and that's when you get to really. And that's see. when you can see what actually happened: the breakdown of the feet, how he how he ran his route, if you wipe something off, if you know all those kind of things. And sometimes you can see it on the regular play, but it's like. You're slowing it down and you're frame by frame in it, trying to see what the hell went on, and then you're halfway out of the picture on most. You're of not it, a so. deluded Yinzer fan. I, I mean, I'm fine with him. I, I like, I like, like I said, I'm, I'm it, down. It's, it's sad we've watched so many of these guys and we know who the guys are doing these cut ups that I know who their YouTube names right. are. Right. And and I'm gotta I'm, subscribe. Like I said, I'm very thankful, and everybody who watches them should hit the subscribe button and thumbs up. And I believe Caddy has a Patreon as he well. He does, on there too. and you should support it. Yeah. I think you can give him a buck. And yeah, and be good keep with doing it. what you're doing, so, buddy. Appreciate it. We really appreciate all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so who's who's your number two? Do we we didn't get you in he, there? He, right? he said I, Butler. I went, I went Butler. So I went Butler. So to oh, recap, but I thought you, I thought, but you could throw AJ Brown in there if you want. Yeah. I so I would have I would have Brown over. So you've you out I would of us, have you've done Brown. I've so. done Brown. I would have Brown over Butler for the same reasons I had Harry because and still I, behind Harry though. So, yes, because I believe Harry has a little higher ceiling than Brown does. Okay. All right. So you got Harry one, Brown two, Butler three, Butler Metcalf three, four. Metcalf four. And Jay Wayne. I'm going Metcalf, Butler, Harry. And I'm going Butler, Metcalf, Harry for to, to wrap up uh today's today's little show and discussion. And I I don't think I really answered if I was on the clock at one one. <coughs> right. What do you do? Did. What are you gonna do there? This is very tough because I almost never take receivers, especially this high. You like, put Butler there. I usually go. Well, I don't know. I usually want to be the one one. You take Metcalf. I, it's hard not to take. <laughs> right? Met, it's really hard not to take Metcalf right there. He's not my wide receiver one, but I got to take him at one one. <laughs> I know. Like, but man, I believe in David Montgomery. I really do, and that's ridiculous to take him at one one. It really is. Yeah, because you don't have to. I right. mean, yeah, but, I would but say if you don't but, have another first round pick, you do have to. But for me, like, you I, know? I want him. And if it falls in a terrible spot, then maybe this changes. But I mean, for me, I've watched the guy for a while and I've just I've seen a lot of tape and I know a lot of people are saying Josh Jacobs is the guy and whatever. I've I'll you miss a decent amount of time. This isn't a class where I feel super great about it. Like last year, I had my definitive four or five guys and I'm trading back and doing this or that. This year it's whatever, and if if I if I couldn't make a move and couldn't do anything else, it would really be hard for me not to take a Keem Butler. But I I'm always a running back guy because they just like I said, we've talked about it a million times. The receivers typically take a little while to pan out, and if the if a running back hits, they're like carry on. Geis is still a third, fourth round startup. Right. Pick. Carry on didn't a, even do that much. Carry on the second round, round pick. Chubb's a second round pick. Sony Michelle, yep. third or fourth round pick. And he got hurt before the season even started and was hurt halfway through the season. Like the running back value goes up so high. If, if Montgomery goes somewhere and does something like DJ Moore is like a fringe fourth round pick sometimes. And like, I don't even really love taking him there. Somebody else Can't usually takes him. And that Can't was the best it. player in there. Like Kirk slides down. Ridley slides down. Uh, all the receivers from that, la- you know, so and Mike Williams still only a fifth round. Corey Davis is still up there. He was one four yep. in the actual NFL draft. One five. One five. And so, I mean, yeah, but look at look at John Ross. I mean, I mean, it's just <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. He's shown absolutely nothing. Right. So sure. But I'm just giving you an example. No, of I got you. I got you. Yeah. There. So that's kind of like I, I really like Montgomery. And if I really couldn't get out of it, like 
and I'm obviously landing spot. Every, like I, that's my guy, and I kind of want him. Yeah, so. I, I think I think if you're in a MFL draft this year, I think your eight hour clock's going to use up a lot from guys trying to trade back, guys trying to trade back, or guys trying to get out of the 2019 first, I'll, or the 2020 first. I'll take my 2019 first, pair it with a guy on my team who's pretty good, and probably try to move it for a pretty good, solid veteran already. If if that's the case. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I would totally do that too. I mean, I have a team where I inherited an orphan team in, in this league, and I like I still have I I dropped three guys on my team, and I still have Eddie Lacy on my team. <laughs> like this guy was doing nothing, and I'm not even paying for the league because that's how bad this team is. But like, I have the 103 in this draft, and if I'm gonna do whatever I can to try and move back and gain more capital or yeah. just trade into 2020, because I this just the team is just not it's just nowhere. And like competing. I don't I don't like in. Previous drafts, I would have needed a, a little bit more to move back. I don't need a ton to move back in in this draft because I feel like I'm I'm pretty like I just I just need to gain a little bit by move. Like right. I'm not going to kill you to move back in this draft and, right. and try to nickel and dime you. I just want to move back and and gain a little bit of something I, I to think move back I, a pick or three. I think if I have, and then like, I'm okay with taking whomever's left. I think if I have a top four pick, I probably will take a swing at one of these top four guys, but. After that, I'm top four guys being who, like for the you. two running backs and the two wide receivers, the, the, the two Mo- receivers Montgomery and Jacobs and and Metcalf and Butler. I think you got to know your league. You got to uh, know your league mates in this. It, well, I yeah. know the with running this, backs with this go draft with this draft specifically. I mean, because if you have a if you're in a league and you can trade back to the 105, 106 and still get your one hundred one, and you know yeah. you can do that, then by all means yeah. do that. Agreed. Because Agreed. this because of this draft class is just so there's it's it's there's just so many thoughts on the draft class that you, I mean you can trade back there's, in these situations. There is no definitive real player. Maybe like I feel like Metcalf is kind of the most definitive player. I think Harry were. is still the one one in terms of DLF ADP for rookies. Yeah, I, I I think he is. He definitely is on their uh, website. April ADP is recently out. Yeah. All right. All right, well, I don't know what we accomplished here in two weeks when the con- when the NFL draft happens. Probably this will all, all be jumbled up, but put those profiles down for your pleasure. Appreciate you joining us, Matt. Always good to have uh, another opinion in here. Our first and only ever guest, second time in. We'll, we'll be having you around, I think, quite a bit here. for. A sh- Hit them up on Twitters, at Fat Mormon. Hit us up at the FF Dynasty, at IMC Myers, at J. Wayne's World. Big Co's not with us tonight, at Dynasty Big Co. You can find him. Appreciate you joining us, everyone. Letting us, list, letting us creep into your ears on your drive or your boring day at work or wherever you're listening to us at. We really appreciate the time you took to, to do that. And uh, if you're looking for some extra content, head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. There's a link on our homepage of the website, theffdynasty.com. A lot of things going on there you can find all of our content if you're looking to do some research on these rookies we've talked about you can find their player page and find out all the things that's what i'm using now i built these rookies these wide receivers and i'm using that i'm using the website to do my research because i can look at game logs and i can uh, there's links to all the youtube mm-hmm. videos the cut-ups and there's highlights and there's the combine metrics and then uh once we've talked about the guy you'll see that pop up on that page as well patreon an extra episode every week t-shirt after six months access to the community page answering a ton of questions the comfiest t-shirt i've I've, of any of any podcast that i've that i've worn so (laughs) i can i can endorse yeah like that i like that well let's end on that good note thanks for joining us everyone till next time you've been listening to the ff dynasties married to the game